Thank you again, everyone, for joining the session. Again, my name is Jaslyn Dukes. I, along with my co-presenter, David Goodwin, and colleagues, CMX Sitar and Lee Ping Song are from the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And today we're going to talk about our research on the performance of externally bonded fiber reinforced polymer uh, composite systems and resilient infrastructure. I wanna start by discussing why we're focused on this particular uh, FR composite systems and infrastructure topic. Fiber reinforced composites, and in particular, we're talking about externally bonded fiber reinforced polymers are lightweight, strong, and corrosion resistant materials that has gained popularity for use in the retrofitting and strengthening of concrete structures. Um, however, there remain some unknowns still about the performance of these FR composite systems, such as how the performance changes over time, as well as how much the performance improves initially and these topics still need to be explored and researched. NIST has developed a unique project uh, or program in which we are developing different projects to study this topic of FRP from multiple levels, from the materials level to the assembly FRP on concrete level to the structural scale level in order to integrate all these knowledge areas to understand how FRP can ultimately enhance community resilience. We began our project by holding a workshop back in 2018 to identify different FRP research needs. And the purpose of this workshop was to identify those needs in order to assess and improve the performance of FR composite materials for retrofit and repair. We invited 40 experts in FRP materials, manufacturing, structural design, and retrofit with FRP and different researchers to engage in breakout sessions surrounding two main focuses, the performance of materials and the performance of structures retrofitted with FRP. Some of the products of this workshop include helping us to develop a research plan based on identified needs, publishing a report documenting those findings from the workshop and our literature review, and we also were able to get a highlight in a recent issue of the ASCE magazine. There is also an accompanying ACI professional publication paper that is based on our report that will soon be released uh, on this workshop and the results of the breakout sessions. These next few slides will describe the NIST research plan for FRP composite systems. So like I mentioned, uh, we used the results of the workshop as well as our literature review and the facts of our internal expertise and capabilities to develop a research plan surrounding FR composite systems. And again, these range from the material level to the structural level, and they include looking at retrofitted shear walls, the research gaps, and the available experiments, and also looking at testing in the future, accelerated and outdoor weathering studies, for durability testing, assessing the variability of the pull-off test, which is a commonly used test in the field to determine bond quality after installation of FRP. And also we investigated the performance of retrofitted structures after the 2018 Anchorage earthquake in Alaska. So our project on FRP retrofitted shear walls, we recognize that FRP is being more commonly used to retrofit reinforced concrete components, including shear walls. But we also realized that there was a concern that there was a lack of testing and experiments of these retrofitted components that would lead to maybe a lack of understanding of the performance of these components. And we understand that there's no modeling parameters in performance-based seismic design codes that are specific for retrofitted concrete walls. So we decided to address that issue by developing a database of all known and available tests that have been performed on retrofitted shear walls in order to develop modeling parameters that can be implemented in PBSD codes such as ACI 369 and ASCE 41. Here I share an overview of the project thus far. We started by developing the database, which currently has over 150 specimens included. From there, we're able to look at histograms and charts of the data and different design characteristics of the wall to identify any research gap 
that can be found and can be used in future projects, including testing of retrofit walls and to quantify properties that to be found in the database. Then we looked at uh, developing uh, digitized backbone curves. So we digitized the hysteretic curves that were found in the sources of each of the specimens and used a widely uh, accepted method to determine control points that will define a simplified backbone curve for each specimen. Then we identified key design parameters that can be used to determine uh, our modeling parameters. And these design parameters are characteristics of each wall and retrofit of the walls that have some impact on the backbone control points. And so we use things like trend plots as well as regression analysis to determine that the six that are shown here are design parameters that we'll use moving forward in developing our modeling parameters. And then finally, we are currently at the stage of developing those modeling parameters using regression methods in order to uh, determine an empirical equation that will be for retrofitted walls specifically. Next, David Goodwin will discuss the other projects. Thanks, Jocelyn. Uh, so I'm gonna be talking about our weathering research at NIST, as well as some of our work with um, field inspection test methods. Uh, so to start off with our weathering studies, uh, our objective is to systematically investigate the durability of externally bonded FRP uh, on concrete using both accelerated laboratory weathering and outdoor weathering. And there are several goals under this objective, the first of which is to provide more weathering data that can be incorporated into current environmental strength reduction factors used in FRP building design. Our second goal is to improve laboratory and outdoor exposure correlation. We wanna make sure that our accelerated weathering tests are mimicking what happens to these samples outdoors as, as closely as possible. Um, so there's always room for improving upon these um, weathering test methods. Uh, and then goal three is to look at the durability of the bond between the FRP and concrete, uh, not just focus on the durability of the FRP material itself. Uh, and so uh, down here in the cartoon at the bottom, um, the, the first two environmental conditions we've chosen to focus on are uh, uh, high temperature and moisture and cold weather or freeze thaw and freeze thaw. Um, two, uh, three common uh, weathering conditions in the United States that uh, these, these materials are exposed to. So our approach for these weathering studies uh, is to is to utilize FRP materials that are representative of those used on buildings and bridges across the United States. So we're making use of commercially manufactured FRP materials, um, both glass and carbon, since they're most prevalent across the US. And um, we're, we're using several different kinds, several different, um, from several different manufacturers. And we're starting off using the um, classic three-point bending concrete uh, prism uh, and, and, and placing you know, our FRP on the tension face with patches on the side for pull-off tests as well as uh, materials characterization. And um, this is likely not the only configuration we will uh, of FRP bonded to concrete we will test, but this is where we are, are choosing to start. These samples, uh, will, will be, we will be producing a large quantity of these samples, uh, hundreds, uh, even up to a thousand and sending these samples to different climatic zones across the United States um, that include areas like Florida and Mississippi, which are hot and humid, Alaska or Maine for cold weather or freeze thaw, and possibly Arizona for hot and dry conditions. Um, this is in collaboration with the Army Corps of Engineers who have many weathering sites across the US. Uh, as you can imagine, this is a huge logistical effort to send these heavy samples all across the US and keep track of how long they've been weathering and um, when they should come back and when they should be tested. Uh, so we've created a unique tracking system, as you can see with the, the, the coin-shaped tag, RFID tag shown in the, in the middle right uh, picture. Um, we are gonna be attaching these to each sample um, to, to monitor the status of the sample in terms of when it should be sent back to us and uh, when it should be tested. And these, uh, these RFID tags are, are, um, can be used with your smartphone 
you can simply scan them with your smartphone and pull up uh, all the data related to the sample. Um, so these samples will come back from these different weathering sites uh, at different time points, and they'll be subjected to bond quality tests, such as the pull-off test on the sides, a non-destructive testing of debonding and materials characterization, followed by destructive three-point bending. And then in the meantime, as you can imagine, this is going to take years. This is a long, uh, long study. Uh, we'll be ex conducting accelerated weathering test methods in our uh, freeze thaw chamber and humidity chambers at NIST and comparing the results as we go along uh, and helping to and starting to improve upon any test methods that, that need improvement. Also mentioned, uh, we deployed up to Anchorage, Alaska after the 2018 Cook Inlet earthquake uh, with the purpose of looking at the structural performance of FRP retrofits on uh, structures up, 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 up there. Many are retrofitted up there. Uh, we also took a look at how the materials were faring in a subarctic environment for over a decade or two. And we looked at a total of six, uh, six retrofitted structures. Uh, we saw that there was no significant damage observed in uh, the FRP retrofitted components, likely due to the fact that the earthquake was not a design level earthquake. But we did see some signs of environmental deterioration uh, for carbon FRP compared to glass. Um, we need to really uh, dive deeper into that with our laboratory testing. So that's a research need that we're looking to pursue. Uh, another big thing to point out is that um, the ins inspection test methods for looking at FRP after a seismic event or after long-term weathering are sparse and there's not much guidance. Uh, we really need to dig deeper into figuring out when these materials need to be replaced um, and, and what the guidelines are, what test methods should be used to determine that uh, over time, if it needs to happen at all. Uh, you can find more information in our recently published paper in Earthquake Spectra, uh, which is shown here on the right. Uh, I'm going to just briefly say that we're working on a, um, a we're working on looking at the uh, sources of variability in the industry standard test for bond quality for FRP to concrete, and we're we're honing in on what some of the um, some of the issues are with this test that create confusion, and we should have a report out about this in 2022. So to summarize, uh, we are generating durability data useful for environmental strength reduction factors in building design, as well as improving, uh, working to improve correlation of accelerated weathering test outdoor weathering. Uh, we're looking at improving test methods for field inspections and developing modeling parameters for shear walls and developing a list of gaps in testing data of retrofitted walls. So the last slide here, I'd just like to uh, quickly advertise that we are seeking postdocs uh, through di two different means. And my email is uh, down at the bottom there. Uh, please feel free to reach out if you're interested in a postdoc position at NIST. Thank you. All right, thanks very much. It was a really nice presentation.